I want to finish my discussion of the Black-Scholes option pricing model by showing you how to work this out in Excel. And over on the right I have uh, the um, formula for the Black-Scholes option pricing model and if you scroll down here I actually have an example. And it's always good to use an example from the textbook just to make sure that you've put the formula in correctly and you've gotten to work correctly because you can look and you'll get a number and you're not sure you did it correctly so it's always good to use one where you know what the answer is okay we'll also go to one more slide and talk about put call parity put call parity tells us that if we know the value of the call option we can figure out what the value of the put option is because there's a relationship but first let's just try and put this information in now what I've done here and if I go to this slide here, I've put in, I've put these numbers in, the $55 for the stock price, the $60, just to save some time. So I put in the information. Here, it says 220 days. It has to be, it has to be annualized. So you have to take the 220 and divide it by 365 to get the fraction of a year. So it's a little more than half a year. It's about 60% of a year um, until the option expires. Now, I could have put in this complete formula for D1 and or I could have put in the complete formula for the whole thing but it's too complicated if you if you mess up somewhere you're going to have a hard time figuring out where you made your mistake so what I've done is I've broken up the D1 let me go back just to the formula part I've broken this part for D1 just up into this part of the formula natural log of S over X R plus sigma squared over 2, I can multiply it by T later, um, the square root of the variance times T, and then I'll put these, solve these out, and then I'll solve for D1 and D2, and then I'll use the functions, the statistical functions in Excel to solve for D1, ND1 and ND2, and then eventually I'll put in this final formula. So I'll do it in steps. It makes it easier to find your mistake. It makes it easier to work these things out. Okay, if we want the natural log of S over X, okay, we're putting in a formula, so put in the equal sign LN, natural log, and we want what's in B1 divided by what's in B2. You want to put this in as formulas. I don't want to put in 55 divided by 60. We want to put in cell B1 over B2 because then we can change the numbers later and see how does that affect the value of the call option. So it helps to enhance your intuition. Okay, I told you that if the stock price goes up, the value of the call goes up. Well, you can verify this by changing the number in cell B1 and seeing if that actually happens. So I'm putting in that and I get that number. All right, I'm going to put in the formula for R plus the variance divided by 2. So that's going to be R is in B4, and I want to add it to the variance, which is in B3, divided by 2. Now, I used, I just said VAR for variance. In the notation, we have sigma squared. That doesn't mean you square the number. That means that's the notation for variance. Sometimes you'll see them in some examples or some homework problems or some online calculators, they'll ask you for the standard deviation. So if you know the variance, you're going to have to take the square root of it. But you don't square this number, you just put in the 10. All right, and then we want the variance times t, we want to take the square root of that. There's a square root function. And so let's put square root of variance. Variance is in b3 times time which is in B5 and close up the parenthesis and so we get that information okay so D1 is equal to natural log of S over X which is in cell make sure to put an equal sign in what's in cell B7 plus what's in cell B8 times T which is in B5 all right, and that's all we have. Oops, I'm sorry. Whoops, I'm, I'm going to need parentheses. I forgot to put those in, so let me put a parenthesis in. It's not going to be happy. It's 
not going to be happy with that parenthesis. So I'm going to have to go back and, and, and correct this. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. And then I want to divide by what's in cell B9 because that's the that's this part here. Okay, we've already we've already computed that. Okay, so we get that number. And B and D2 is going to be equal to D1, what's in cell B11, minus what's in cell B9. Okay, so this is already calculated in B9. Okay, now we need ND1 and ND2. These are, this is what we call the normal, the standard normal cumulative distribution function. And there's a function here. If you go down to the sum sign and you get the drop down menu, go to more functions, and we, we choose statistical functions. Well, I happen to be using the statistical functions, but it may say most recently used. You choose statistical functions. But we're going to scroll down, and this is going to be something like norm sdist, normal uh, standard distribution. If I hit OK, it's going to ask me what do I want to do uh, the calculation of. Actually, I want to do it of D1. I can actually just highlight that and say OK. So it gives me that number, and then ND2. I could actually just copy this formula down because then it would use this number here. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to copy that down, and so I get ND2, right? You can see that it's taking the normal S dist of what's in B12, and so the call option is going to be equal to S, which is in cell B1, times ND2, okay, so use the asterisk key to multiply, and that's in cell B14, minus the exercise price, which is in B2, divided by, you need the exponential of R times T. R is in B4, and T is in B5. Let me close that up. Okay. Minus. What do we subtract? We subtract, uh, wait a minute, did I do that right? No, oh, no, I'm sorry. No subtraction, just times ND2. ND2 was in B15, so hopefully I, I got that right. And let's see, $4.20, and if we scroll over to this one, uh, $4.19, okay, a little rounding, but that's the correct answer. All right, let's, let's put in the put call parity formula. The value of the put option is equal to the value of the call plus the present value of the exercise price minus the stock price. So let's put that in too. So we'll just put in the formula. The value of the call is in B17 plus, what do we have? We have X. The exercise price is in B2 and that's going, we need the present value of that exponential of B4 times B5, right? That's the way you put it in. You don't put an E to the RT. You put an EXP. That's the function in Excel. And then you put R times T. Okay? Minus the stock price. And the stock price is in B1. So let's hope we get the right answer. We get 707. And again, just rounding error. So that's that's correct. Now let's go back and see what happens when we change numbers. From the previous tutorial, I said, gee, if the stock's price goes up, the value of the call is more valuable. It makes sense, right? Because you can buy it at the exercise price of 60, so the higher the stock price is, the more valuable the call option is. Let's Let's verify that. Let's change the price to 60. What do we see? We see the value of the call went up. The value of the put went down because the put lets you sell at the exercise price. And so a higher stock price makes the put less valuable. Let's go back to our original number of 55. We can do this for each one. 
let's see what happens to when we change the exercise price. If you raise the exercise price, you're raising the price at which you can buy the stock, so it should become less valuable. So let's raise this to 65. The call option goes down, but the value of the put option goes up because this is our sell price. So for the call option, you'd be buying at a higher price. For the put option, you'd be selling at a higher price. That's a good thing for the put, a bad thing for the call. Okay, we'll go back to our original 60. What happens when the variance gets higher? We said that the more volatile it is, the more valuable the call option is, the more valuable the put option should be too because if it's not worth, you, you have no downside risk. Normally you don't like to see prices go up and down because if the market is down, if the stock is down, you lose money. In this case, you just throw the option away. So let's see what happens when it goes up to 15%. Okay, they should both go up, and in fact, they do. Call option goes up to 541, the put option goes up to 827. So that's good. Okay, seems to be working quite nicely. Risk-free rate. Let's see what happens if we raise the risk-free rate to 8%. We said that the value of the call should go up, and it, and it does. Okay, and the value of the put goes down a little bit. Okay, go back to our original 6%, and let's increase the number of days to, let's say, 320. You would expect the value for both the put and the call to go up, simply because there's more time for the stock to go up in value or down in value, so that should make the both the put and the call more valuable, and it does. So, looks pretty good. Okay, our formula worked nicely. It's given us a chance to verify what we were what we learned that you know when this goes up this the call option goes up in value when this goes up the call option goes down in value uh, when the variance goes up the call should be worth more as well as the put when the risk-free rate goes up the call should be worth more and when the time until the option expires it uh, gets longer it should also go up so it's nice to be able to use Excel to do this. It gives you a good chance to understand this. I realize, you know, most of you are quite savvy on the computer and realize that there are um, calculators on the Internet that do the Black-Scholes formula. But you want to make sure, if you decide to use those, that you do an example where you know the answer. I believe I did this in class once, and I couldn't get the right answer because... I didn't realize they weren't asking me for variance. They were asking me for standard deviation. So you have to be careful. Some of the calculators will want you to put it in as 10 for 10 percent. Others will want you to put it in as 0 0.10. So you have to be careful and you have to understand what that calculator is doing and how it's doing the calculation. So make sure you do if you decide to use those and those can be quite handy that you do an example where you know what the correct answer is and then that way you can verify that you've put the numbers in correctly and then you can start using it to price whatever it is you want to price.